Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of What About Me? In this episode, I'll be doing um, The Witcher 3. But before we get into that, since this is the first episode, let me explain what What About Me series is about. So, I love the uh, WTF is series from Total Biscuit. Um, more specifically, the port report section of it, where he, you know, reports on uh, how well it runs on his computer. Uh, I love how it's presented. I love how it shows the uh, stats in the corners of the screen. It's just good, you know, good quality. But with Total Biscuit's system, he is, you know, he's running two 980s, I think. That, that's what I last heard was two 980s. Um, SLI, so that's pretty hectic. i7 processor, it's just really good PC. So I was thinking, how about, because I've just built a budget PC, um, you should be able to see a few of the specs listed in the top right, but it's obviously not too detailed, but I just have it there anyway. So it's an i3-6100 processor clocked at 3.7 gigahertz, dual core. It's a GTX 960 4GB edition, um, I, mini ITX size, so I guess that doesn't make too much of a difference, the size of the GPU, but I'm just letting you know what it is. Um, 8 gigs of 3000 megahertz RAM, DDR4, uh, a gigabyte Z170 and gaming 5 motherboard, um, Samsung 850 250GB SSD, and yeah, a terabyte hard drive, but who cares. So, those are my specs, and yeah, like, you know, I would call it mid, mid-range PCs. The entire list of parts, so like for my, for my computer, it cost me $1,100 in pure parts. That's excluding the cost of Windows 10, and that's also excluding uh, the cost of shipping. So, altogether, it was about uh, 13 to 1500 AUD. Um, the reason I say 13 to 15 is because I already had keyboard, mouse, monitor, and sound system. So it was 1300 purely for the computer, including you know Windows 10 mailing. But yeah, like I said, 1100 AUD in pure parts. So I wanted to make this series to cater to the people who run on mid-end mid PCs or even lower end. Um, so yeah, here we go. So, Witcher 3, beautiful looking game. At the moment, the settings I'm currently running is the ones that are optimized by GeForce Experience. So let's just check it here. So all hair works is off. I like to run borderless window because uh, I like alt tabbing. Um, ultra background characters. That's important for the lower end. I've seen some places to describe it as having no impact, but for us on the i3, it does, excuse me, slightly have an impact because, you know, the more characters you have on the screen, the more you're stressing the CPU, and our CPUs aren't too hectic, so that's important. But they did optimize it to Ultra, which is nice. Medium shadows, high terrains, low waters, Ultra grass density, high textures, which, you know, it looks fairly nice. Uh, originally, this was on low, the foliage visibility, but I don't like how they, put, they opted it to low, so I just bumped it one up to medium. This is one of the biggest performance killers of this game, though, so... You know, if you're on a lower end, I wouldn't probably go higher than medium. Uh, low obviously grants you more performance, but it looks shit. So I'm, I'm not doing that. Detail ultras, yep. Post-processing. So, I don't like blurs. I'm not a big fan. Turn them off. Uh, Anti-aliasing is nice. I'm not sure what form of anti-aliasing that this game uses, but either way. Blooms, yeah. Sharpening. I find that the extremes of both of these... You know, like the like the off and the high, they both just don't look right. The lo like you know, when it's off, it looks too blurry. When it's high, things just look unrealistically sharp. I mean, it, it looks so. Maybe that, that like obviously that's just subjective. That's just my opinion, but I don't like it high. I keep it on low. Don't think it has an impact on FPS though. Um, I don't run ambient occlusion because that's just how they set it. Obviously, I would put on HBR plus if the performance granted me. And obviously, all these on. Not obviously, but this is what the GeForce experience has opted me to put it on. So, let's have a bit of a runaround, shall we? I've got the music down pretty low for now, just so you can see everyone. But yeah, so let's look at the stats in the top left, right? 99% GPU usage, that's always good. Uh, means we're maxing out GPU, means we're not, you know, no performance to waste. Um, you'll usually see these, you know, 99% to 100% in AAA titles, uh, Witcher 3... Um, crap, what else do I play? I actually don't play much else right now. I've eh? been playing a lot of Witcher 3 lately. 
Um, but yeah, when, when you're playing more of an indie game, you know, you won't tend to get that level of performance. So let's look underneath that at the memory tab. So I've got my memory clocked at 3,506, which is effectively 7,012, I believe, because uh, it doubles. Now you can see at these settings, I'm using about 1,800 megabytes of VRAM. Now this is good because it means that if you're running a 2 gigabyte card, you're not going to be running into um, issues regarding VRAM, like, uh, what's the word? Excessive VRAM usage. Um, and I hate some games are very violent with their excessive VRAM usage. On my old build, I had a 3 gig card and I used to play Shadow of Mordor. And there were so many artifacts, it was unplayable. Like, the whole screen was flashing. It was ridiculous. So this is good for people with 2 gig cards. Even if you've got a 960, that's a 2 gig version. That's good too. Um, but remember, this is what was optimized. So I can't tell you for Ultra, but we'll do those tests later on the video. Uh, CPU. Now... I don't have all my four threads listed, but it's currently sitting at about 80% CPU usage. Um, and the temps are about 74 degrees, which is not so bad. RAM usage, 5.7 gigs, which is pretty good considering we're an 8 gig uh, build. 8 gigs is, you know, I found that when I've been using this MSI, I found that the 8 gigs is always, you know, supplied. It's, it's, it's never little enough. So the 8 gigs is good. And finally, we've got the frames at the bottom with the uh, frame times next to it. <coughs> so, just by looking at frames, and we've also got the frames on top right if you just want to, you know, purely just for the FPS. Running about 50, and this is pretty good considering where, like right now, we are in a uh, city, so there are a lot of NPCs, and we do have a low-end CPU. Uh, two cores, four threads. Uh, this is not bad for that kind of CPU. And it's fairly smooth in the cities, not going to lie, like, it's, it's fairly smooth. You get the occasional stutter, but it's not, it's not anything that's game-breaking, well, not for me anyway. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, I'm pretty impressed. It's running at 1080p, and those settings that are listed, so let's, let's, let's run outside to, you know, out of the city. Usually I'd expect a performance increase running out here, because less NPCs, but I do believe that the Witcher does use some pretty heavy, um, you know, graphical effects on the grass and things like that. So, not expecting too much of an increase. But usually when I'm gaming alone, this can go between uh, 50 to 70 FPS. Excuse me. Uh, keep in mind that I think that the NVIDIA Shadow Play system does impact FPS by 1 to 2. Quote me if I'm wrong. Um... Yeah, I do believe that's the impact. So, as you can see, it's, it's you know, out here, 59 FPS. Uh, and this, you know, this is pretty fair. Like, I'm... It's quite smooth. It's very enjoyable. And the game itself, I'm not here to talk about the game itself, because I'm here just to talk about, like, performance. But the game itself is very enjoyable. I'm doing it very late, because I only just got it on the Steam sale. Um, yeah, so these are the stats. I've just hit 80 degrees on the GPU. That's all good. So yeah, that's for these settings. Now let's check that's it out. I want to just show you, if you're running my build or a similar build, we can, I just want to show you like the presets, right? So let's start with low. Everything's on low now. We'll put it low on the post-processing as well. Um, just preset because I don't have time to fiddle with each individual setting. But let's see the kind of performance we'd be expecting on the low setting. A big, big hit to graphical fidelity, I think. Things look more muddy. It still looks fine. Like, don't get me wrong. It's very be like beautiful game. But I'm not sure if you can tell. Like, when you have the draw distance or foliage distance, I forget what the name of the setting is. But can you see how everything is kind of like fading in with about ten, the five ten meters in front of us? I don't like that. But you can see that we're getting quite a good lot of performance here. Like, that's not bad. That is not bad. Did I go to that thing? What was I doing? We'll just go back here quick because I want to show you the starting area. Because I think that place had some fairly good performance. Um, yeah. We, we'll, we'll just head back there. But yeah, around here, getting around 70 FPS, which is pretty fair considering what we have in the system. Um, I wouldn't call what I've got budget. 
I'd call it more, yeah, mid-end. Perhaps budget's not the right word. Budget, I believe, would be more like, you know, Pentium, uh, 750 Ti, something like that. But, you know, this is like kind of cheaper side of more modern hardware, is what I like to think. I like to think I'm really getting my bang for buck with this build. Um, would have got the 970, because I know that's the best performance per dollar, but wasn't permitted with my build. Couldn't afford. So we start off in this place called White Orchid, and you start right here. So let's go give this place a look. Alright, so on the low settings, we're in the, about the 80s now. Uh, which is, you know, that's fairly good performance. It's quite smooth. I do have a 144Hz monitor from my old build because my old build was, I had a 780Ti with an i7, so I was gaming pretty hard and I kept the, I kept the monitor. Um, so when I built my new PC, I was, I was strictly keeping performance per dollar in mind or as much as, as I could. So yeah, around here, about 70fps, which is 70 to 80, drops into 60, it's all good. So yeah, on the low settings, fine. Then let's crank it up. Have a look. We'll go medium here, and we'll also go medium here, I think. Turn off the motion blues though, because I don't like those. So, quite a performance hit, just from standing around here. If we were averaging 70 to 80 before, now we're down to 50. That's it, bro. But, for me, 50 is not so bad. I think my lowest limit's about 40 to 45, probably 45. Anything below that, I just get a bit... Not, not upset, but pissed off, like, should, should, we shouldn't be having performance dips that low. Um, but the main thing to keep in mind here with these games, especially the ones that look good, is frame time. So, as you can see in the top left, we've got FPS, and then we've also got a number next to it in milliseconds. Now, that's the amount of milliseconds in between each frame. So, 60 FPS has a frame time of 33.3 milliseconds, I believe. That's... No, that's wrong. 16.6 .6, um, milliseconds per frame, in between frames. Um, so right now, you, like you know, obviously more milliseconds is bad. You want you want you want lower frame times. But the most important thing with frame times is consistency, right? So on my old build, the reason I actually got rid of it is because I wasn't enjoying game anymore. I used to play on an i7 and a, not, a 780 Ti, but I would get these spikes in frame time. So I'd be averaging frame time about 10 milliseconds, so about 100 FPS. I'd be having 10 milliseconds in between each frame, and then and then the next frame would take 100 or even on some cases 500 milliseconds to render. Which, you, you know, you're going from 100 FPS to like two FPS. So you get these big stutters, like freezes, right? And I hated those. So the main thing to look, like look for with performance is that your frame times aren't fluctuating too much. Now, I know it's hard to look up there and like you know spot if you have a spike. But you can usually feel it, like when you when you when you're turning the mouse, you can usually feel if it's in a, like uneven, um, you know, frame times. So frame times, are, you know, you want to keep an eye on those. So right now, it's it's quite smooth with these with these settings, medium settings. Crank it up. No, not gameplay. Don't judge me for playing on the lowest difficulty, please. We're we'll high. We'll give high a shot. Now this is what I started off playing when I first got the, I'll, you know, I'll put post-processing on high as well, just to match. Now this is what I first started playing with before I optimized it with GeForce, but I didn't like the low frame rate. I wasn't a, too much of a big fan. Absolutely. Sorry, I just got to turn off, um, I keep going there. I just got to also turn off motion blur because that's just annoying. It's not so bad, but it just depends on when and where you use it. So if we look here, we've got quite an average level of performance, 36, 37 FPS. It's still surprisingly smooth, and when I say smooth, I mean the frame times. The frame times aren't fluctuating too much. So it's a smooth experience, a few stutters, but nothing nothing hectic. And it does look quite good, I will give it that. Like it's a, it, it is quite a good looking game, this one. Um, but yeah, for, like for me personally, I don't really settle for this level of performance usually, unless it's really, really good looking. Like this looks great, but it's like I prefer my high frame rates. I prefer silky smooth gameplay over, uh, you know, graphics. 
Um, and finally, we'll put on Ultra. And I think Ultra is really going to cripple this because, if I'm not mistaken, Ultra. Let's check it. Turns on Hairworks. And see, the Hairworks is what. Pardon my language, but it fucks you up. So I'll just show you now. Like, it's, it's not going to be good. What are we on? Yeah, sub 30s. I mean, like, you could argue that it's not too much less than what we want. But, 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 muddling up my words. <laughs> you could argue that it's not too much worse performing than what we were just on. But look at this, like 25 FPS. If you're really a quality fanatic, I can't recommend this game. Like, I mean, and by quality fanatic, I mean you have to have the higher settings for, to enjoy it. Uh, I used to be like that. Like, if I wasn't running Ultra, I'd be, you know, I'd be like, what the hell? But now that I've got more of a lower mid-end PC, I don't mind lowering the settings a bit. But yeah, this is as good as it looks. Come on now. 27, 30 frames. I mean, if it floats your boat, go for it. I just want to show you that again. But this time, let's do it with... Why do I keep doing that? Hair works off. Let's turn that off and see how we go. Because hair works is quite the performance killer. So yeah, we're obviously like look at that, another 10 to 12 FPS depending on where we are. Um, and honestly, look, hair works is cool, but it is nowhere near worth the cost, like the performance cost. Like if you ask me. His hair there looks just fine. Um, I think it's it's a technology that's well ahead of its time because it's something that's focusing on something so little that takes up such a minimal um, real estate of your screen, yet has such a performance impact, which is why I don't like it. Like, yeah, it's cool. You can see Geralt's, Geralt's hair bouncing around. The horse's hair looks nice. Um, sometimes I feel like it looks a bit like unto realistic. Unto realistic? That's not fucking weird. It looks a bit too realistic in the sense that it just looks weird. I read this thing once about the Uncanny Valley. Uh, I'm not sure if you know about it, but what it is is where when they're making robots, there's like a, a graph. You can look it up, the Uncanny, Va Uncanny Valley, or even look up the Vsauce video on it. I forget the name. Uh, something to do with fear. But what, definitely watch a Vsauce video. And he talks about how Whoa. the more and more closer you approach a uh, human, so like in a robot, the weirder and weirder it gets. Like after a limit, it just looks so weird. Like these robots smiling at you and stuff, you're just like, what the fuck? You know? So I feel like it's the same with this hair because you're looking at his hair, but it's, you can just see all these strands of hair. Like not right now, they're off right now, the hair works. But you just see all these strands of hair and it's just annoying. It just looks, it just looks weird. It doesn't, it doesn't look right. But yeah, in this first part of the game, I mean, if, you, if you're... A console gamer, just turned PC gamer, and you came onto this. I'm sure you enjoy this. Like this is this is ultra settings, hair works off, 30 plus FPS, which you know for our system is not so bad. Of course, it could be better optimized. Like I was playing Mad Max, and that's always a, like 50 plus FPS on the highest of high settings, which is very impressive. And although it is just a desert, it is quite good looking. It is quite you know pleasing to the eye. Um. Yeah, and you'll notice also that even though we're on these ultra settings, we're still getting a similar performance out of the VRAM, 1700 megabytes. Keep in mind, this is at 1080p. So, yeah, it's quite a good performer in terms of fluidity. Could probably use a bit of Damn extra FPS. Right. Um, yeah, like, I I'll just give it a try, see how it performs battling, right? Let's just have a keep an eye on the frames here. So, yeah, you can see that there's a bit of a dip, especially in battle. But, if you have uh, NVIDIA card, <laughs> if you do have an NVIDIA card, the GeForce experience is, you know, great. Just sort of click optimize, and then you can just fiddle from there. Oh, that's cool. Um, because, it just provides a good base, uh, uh, somewhere to start from. So for me, I just optimized it. I, I was happy with the performance, and all I did was increase the view distance to medium because I don't like the low view distance. That's quite like it's just annoying. Um, but just while we're here, let's just check this. Perhaps, perhaps if we just put the view distance lower and kept everything else on ultra, maybe foliage visibility. Let's lower this to high. See how that goes. 
So, I think I think there's an increase. Obviously, whenever you lower a setting, there will be an increase. But it's about how much of an increase you get. Yeah, it's not not really too hectic of an increase, is it? But it just depends on when, where, when and where you are in the game. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I'll just go back to my original settings, which I can't recall. But... We'll put on medium just for now, while I just talk about anything else. I think we're just about done for this episode. So this is the first episode of What About Me. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Look, I hate when people on YouTube say, "Oh, hit the like and subscribe button." But if you did, if you did like it, if you you know, if you like this type of content, just so I know if I should be making more of it or not. This is my first video on the channel. Um, and yeah, if you want to see more, because I, I should be doing more of these, like for other games, like Mad Max, a bit of GTA, um, <laughs> Rocket League. If anyone you know, anyone cares, but Rocket League's pretty solid performer. Actually, it's not it's not too demanding. Uh, H1Z1 actually, I'll probably do one of that because that is a big favourite of mine. Um, and also, just any other more modernish games. You know, I, I, I quite like um, providing this information because it's good information, especially if you're looking to a build. Um, yeah. So, we're finishing off on medium settings. It's clocked itself down to 1240 MHz. I guess because it's not as intense. Um, yeah, using a lot less VRAM and about 6 gigs of actual RAM. So, yeah. Uh, also, with this build, to keep in mind, if you are looking to build an i3 build, I'll urge you to use a Z170 motherboard. Because that way you can have faster RAM. And with, like, for some reason, when you have an i3, you get a lot better performance when you have very fast RAM. Not a lot better, like, probably 10%, I think, the increase was. Which is fairly considerable. If you're on a strict budget, however, I, you know, I can't imagine it would be too terrible if you went i3, DDR3, um, you know, 1600 megahertz RAM. I can't imagine you'd be paying for it too much. But if you have the money, it'd be good to get a Z170 board so you can overclock your RAM to 3000 megahertz effective. If you want to learn more about that, go to Digital Foundry's channel. Um, they've got a good video on the i3, and they just talk about how upping the RAM um, actually helps quite a lot. Especially for the 6100, which, which is what I'm using. But I do understand that people are on a budget, so it might, it might be hard. The reason I did it was because I had a choice of either going higher-end motherboard, sorry, lower-end motherboard, lower RAM, higher-end CPU, so I could have gotten an i5, but I thought it'd, it'd be better to get an i3, that way I can upgrade it in the future, just swap out the CPU versus instead of swapping out a motherboard and RAM. Because right now I've got very good RAM, very good motherboard. So all I've got to do when I want to upgrade is swap out the CPU and maybe the GPU. But, like I said, if you want a budget build, i3 with low megahertz RAM, still, still alright. I can't tell you how it performed in this game. Can't imagine it would be too much worse, maybe 5 to 10 FPS lower. But yeah. So yeah, again, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, if you did like it, give it a like. Subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, and I'll be making more of these real soon. Alright guys, this is the man himself signing off.